Let me take you back. The year is 1998. We are two years away from the turn of the century to Y2K in the year 2000. Titanic wins 11 Oscars, and it becomes the only film, and the first film at the time, to hit $1 billion in box office revenue. Google was founded, and the 1998 NFL draft class would change the future of the NFL for years to come. We would see Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf, a battle between the two top quarterbacks in the class. Which one would go number one overall? Of course, Peyton Manning, quarterback out of Tennessee, would go on to have a pretty good NFL career. And Ryan Leaf, quarterback out of Washington State, I believe, would go on to have a less than phenomenal career in the NFL, uh, taken number two by the then San Diego Chargers. Charles Woodson, the only defensive player in NCAA college football history to win the Heisman, would enter the draft. And we'd see a lot of other impactful players enter the NFL for the first time. And let me go ahead and take you down that road. Of course, big shout out to, I believe his name is Moneybags with three A's and then a Z at the end uh, for making this draft class. There are a number. I was searching through the community files section and uh, looking for files to do videos on. So without further ado, let me go ahead and show you the 1998 NFL draft class. Also, who could forget about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky? And that little fiasco. I like you, Tricky Bill. I like it. Anyway, this is the 1998 NFL Draft as the Colts would end up selecting Peyton Manning. Ryan Leaf did indeed go to Washington State. I was not mistaken. Charles Woodson. The Hall of Famers are listed um, with this little yellow, dark yellow insignia. Pro Bowlers, of course, with that big cross. So there are a number of impactful players and Pro Bowlers in this draft class. Fred Taylor. Could be a future Hall of Famer, lifetimer with the Jaguars, pretty much. He ended up going to the Patriots later in his career, but he was phenomenal. Keith Brooking, Dakeo Spikes, phenomenal players. Randy Moss was in this draft class, taken deep uh, in the first round by the Minnesota Vikings. We'd see Alan Fanica, one of the best offensive linemen in the history of the NFL. Who else is super impactful here? Uh, Flozo Adams was a good lineman. Samari Roll. Awesome defensive back out of Florida State. Uh, he would obviously uh, move to the Titans as the Oilers would uh, change. They were the Tennessee Oilers for for a year or two before changing to the Titans. Uh, Olin Krutz, another phenomenal offensive line. Pretty much a lifetime bear player. Amon Green would be drafted by the Seahawks later, of course. We know how that goes with the, uh, with the Texans. And, of course, who could forget the Green Bay Packers. Brian Greasy was a pro bowler. Son of Bob Greasy, NFL legend with the Dolphins, Heinz Ward would become one of the best receivers in the history of the NFL. Uh, top 20 probably is what I'd give him. Maybe higher. It, it's a little bit uh, subjective. Matt Burke was a phenomenal offensive lineman with the Vikings. I didn't even know he went to Harvard. Good for him. Matt Hasselbeck, great Seahawks quarterback, of course, drafted by the Packers here in the sixth round, and he was awesome for the Seattle Seahawks for a while, took them to the playoffs. And then notable undrafted players. We have Jeff Saturday, one of the best centers. Another Colt in Mike Vanderjack, who, uh, of course, was a phenomenal kicker for a few years before absolutely losing his mind. Peyton Manning, not a huge fan. Phil Dawson, hook him horns. London Fletcher, one of the great undrafted players in NFL history. There were a lot of very, very talented players in this draft class. Just because they didn't make the Pro Bowl doesn't mean they weren't very good. Brian Finneran, of course, immortalized in Madden. Had a great year with Michael Vick and the Atlanta Falcons. This was a very, very good draft class. If you guys want to make a draft class, just tweet it at me. Tell me what to look for, and I will try to do a video on it, as I know these do take a lot of time. And I'm not sure how good this draft class is going to be in Madden, as I, I, didn't, I didn't make it. So shout out to Moneybags. We're going to see how good this draft class is. So, of course, not everything is in the exact order that I would like it to be. That's a little bit upsetting with this draft class. As you can see, quarterback... Uh, Matt Hasselbeck is around one guy, and we go all the way down to the bottom here, as I'm sure they would not be uh, leaving him out of the draft class. They did. They totally... Ryan Leaf is not in the draft. No. What are you doing? How is Ryan Leaf not here? How are you going to forget one of the most impactful players of this draft class? Granted, he was terrible in the NFL. Couldn't stay uh, clean. He had drug problems later on. It was kind of uh, kind of terrible. Um but Peyton Manning is here. Randy Moss, of course, out of Marshall. 
maybe the best player in this draft class, but it's hard to say. Peyton Manning, all-time great at his position. Randy Moss, arguably the best receiver in NFL history. I know Jerry Rice's numbers are certainly better, but Randy Moss might be the best. Peyton Manning, Charles Woodson, one of the best defensive backs in history. Uh, and there are some really, really talented players in this draft class. We look at Heinz Ward, Alan Fanica. And it's going to be interesting to see where some of these players go. Fred Taylor, even Trey Thomas, looks like a very solid offensive lineman. Takeo Spikes was so good for a number of years. I think he went to the Bills after the Bengals, if I'm not mistaken. Jeremiah Trotter was even really good, and he is showing that off. Keith Brooking was phenomenal. Matt Burke, and of course, Jeff Saturday, who goes undrafted, uh, is in the first round of this draft class. As this is almost like a redo, knowing the information that we do now. Amon Green, I mean, Pat Tillman. Uh, rest in peace, of course, served uh, overseas and was unfortunately uh, gunned down by friendly fire. Uh, Samari Roll was a phenomenal cornerback for the Titans for a little while. There are a number of really, really good players in this class. We are going to simulate to the draft, however. And I am going to, well, let's just simulate right to the draft. I'm going to have the CPU do the scouting. And this is really just all about the draft anyway and seeing where these players go, what their overalls are. I don't know any of the overalls, but I'm guessing that a lot of those players up near the top are going to be pretty damn good. I would guess that Randy Moss is probably near uh, a 90 overall, as he absolutely just lit up the league, tore it you know, up, lit it on fire. You guys know what I'm saying. Randy Moss came onto the scenes, guns blazing, firing on all cylinders, so he could be a very high overall. We will start the draft, though, as I am picking at number 18 overall. That's not going to work. I'm going to need that number one overall pick. So it's not like we're doing a franchise anyway. So we can kind of just do whatever we want for these picks to draft some of these players. As that's the whole point of the video. And of course, the Bills have no interest in Jalen Ramsey for the number one overall pick. I want to ask you guys a question. And you can tell me down in the comments section below. Do you guys think that a team like the Bills would accept you know, Jalen Ramsey for the number one overall pick? I would lean towards they probably would. I don't know. I mean, it would be close because it all depends on the Bills' need, what they want to get, because they maybe have their franchise quarterback in Josh Allen. I don't personally believe that, but they drafted him in the first round last year, so I don't think they'd be so quick to uh, to trade him already. We'll throw Andrew Norwell in here. So I don't know. Let me guys or let me know what you think down in the comments section below, as they're still not interested. Brandon Linder, maybe. Let's go to right outside linebacker. Let's just move Blair Brown. Tell me they accept it. All right. So, we have the number one overall pick. I would say the Bills probably would accept that. Jalen Ramsey is arguably the best defensive player in the NFL. You could certainly make that claim. I wouldn't agree with you, but you could certainly make that claim. Who do we want to go with number one? We have one of the best defensive backs in NFL history. Really good combine for him. Pretty good top three skills. Nothing insane, in my opinion, but pretty good. And he did win Defensive Rookie of the Year, if I recall. Peyton Manning, very good player. Good throw power. Not the fastest, but he is what looks to be good accuracy. We are the Jaguars. I think I think we got to go Randy Moss. 4-3 flat speed, insane vertical. Great three cone and 20-yard shuttle. Randy Moss, welcome to the Jacksonville Jaguars. He is a ridiculous overall to start out with. He's a 94 overall. I wish he had an afro. Where's the fro? What I will say is I think 94 overall is a little bit too high. I think, it's a, I think it's a little bit too high. To be fair, Randy Moss came into the NFL and, you know, as I said, just came out guns blazing. 17 touchdowns, uh, averaging more than a touchdown per game and plenty more touchdowns per start. Only started 11 games. But he had 1,300 yards. I mean, 94 overall, in my opinion, is just a bit too high. If they gave Randy Moss an 88 or an 89, I don't know if I'm complaining 94 just feels a little bit too high, but if anyone deserves it coming out, it would probably be Randy Moss. He had one of the best rookie seasons in NFL history for a wide receiver, for any player, honestly. But that is a pretty good first selection. And honestly, if I'm me, which I am, I'm thinking that Blake Bortles probably isn't the answer in Jacksonville. And granted, it really has no weight. Uh, to what we actually do as the Broncos are on the board. Would the Broncos want Blake Bortles is the question. And the answer seems to be yes. We are going to acquire the number two overall pick. And of course, this doesn't matter. We're not simulating after this uh, for the sake of seeing how well we do. It's more about uh, seeing how the team does as we'll trade Leonard Fournette as well. 
for that number two overall pick. That should go through. And it doesn't, actually. Fantastic. All right, let's see. This part really shouldn't matter. Let's go to free safety. Cody Davis should get it done. And the trade is accepted. I think we're going back here. And we just trade away our quarterback. We need a quarterback, right? You imagine if Randy Moss teamed up with Peyton Manning coming out the gate. And I granted Peyton Manning threw a lot of interceptions his rookie year, if I recall. But he is an 89 overall coming out of the draft. Superstar development. And he is looking pretty good. The Sheriff. 89 overall strong arm quarterback. Interesting. 95 throw power, 86 medium. Uh, excuse me, 86 deep, 90 medium, 93 short accuracy, 85 awareness, 90 play action, 89 throw under pressure with 80 throw on the run. He is a very, very good player, obviously. And something I didn't notice, or I'm just now noticing, is we didn't check out the stats on Randy Moss that made him a 94 overall. Something tells me that he's going to be pretty good. And he has 99 speed, 99 acceleration, 90 catching, 90 catching traffic, 85 short, 85 medium route running, 99 deep route running. 99 spectacular catch i'm really not complaining about either of those two you could certainly make that claim 87 release 93 agility 99 jumping randy moss absolute monster coming out i think he was born in west virginia somewhere weird if you're from west virginia uh, i'm not gonna say sorry because you know you know exactly what i'm talking about let's go ahead and simulate now to the middle of the first round it sucks we're going to miss out on Charles Woodson. We'll see where he goes after the draft, and we'll be able to see where everybody is. Fred Taylor's here, and we traded away Leonard Fournette. So is Amon Green. Fred Taylor, I think, is one of the most underrated players in NFL history. I'm going to be leaning towards taking Fred Taylor here, and we might as well. Let's go ahead and take Fred Taylor. He is 4 5 7 speed. That's it's not fair. He should be, like, there's no way he ran a 4 5 7. Let's look this up. So it will be an unofficial time here. Let's go ahead and just like control F so we can see four. Oh, okay. Taylor was an explosive back with a rare mix of size, speed, and lateral quickness. Four two nine unofficial. You're gonna give him a four five seven. We're gonna draft him anyway. As Fred Taylor, eighty overall. We're looking at quick development. I'm fine with that. 80 overall, power back, 73 elusive. Let's see, he's got 87 speed, which you guys you guys know I'm a little bit upset with this. 87 trucking, 85 agility, 89 carrying, uh, 85 ball carry. He's got a lot of mid-80 stats. Speed should not be one of them. I want 94 speed for Fred Taylor. I think that's fair. But Fred Taylor is still pretty good. I'll take an 80 overall draft pick any day of the week as we pick now in the middle of the second round. I hope that this draft class still has some players remaining from that area or from the actual draft because I don't want to take uh, and I'm not going to take a player. We, we do have at least one here in Brian Greasy, but I'm not going to take a player that's auto generated by the CPU. Not going to happen. So I would take Alan Rossum. He went to the Philadelphia Eagles in the third round. The only problem is he looks terrible. He looks very bad. Like, how are you going to give him C zone, C minus man, C minus catching and tell me he's one of the top guys available? I mean, we're going to take him. We're going to take him because there's no point in doubling down on quarterbacks and taking Brian Greasy, who first round. Are we are we serious here? Alan Rossum's going to be the pick, though. Is he any good? 74 overall. He's not ranked number one game. I'm telling you he's not. He's, <laughs> I'm looking at him. 97 speed. He has absolutely no coverage. It's my controller disconnects. What did Alan Rossum run in the 40 to get a 97 speed that Fred Taylor... Has an 87 at a 429. Was he in the was he running like a 28? <laughs> what are you doing? To be fair, Rossum was an accomplished track star. And uh, he set the 1993 high school record in the 100 meter dash with a 10.02. Which is pretty damn good, actually. <laughs> if you're gonna set the uh, 1993 uh just high school record, that's not bad. Are there any players here in the third round that we can take who are actually in the 1998 draft class? So we could go Brian Kelly, but he looks bad. He went to the Tampa Bay Bucks in the second round. It would be awesome if Patrick Sertain was here. I don't think he is. I didn't see him. His son, Patrick Sertain Jr., is a monster. Or at least he was very, very highly recruited. Where did he end up? Ooh, he commit to Alabama. Interesting. Patrick Sertain II. I guess he's not a junior. 
I don't know, some some list him as Junior, some list him as his second. The difference would be that if his like middle name was different than his father's, that it would not be Junior because they don't have the same name. We have Patrick Frank Sertain versus Patrick... What is your middle name? I, I don't know. Oh, he actually had a fingertip interception today. I know this doesn't really matter much because uh, we're talking about his father here who doesn't appear to be on the board in any capacity. So we're just going to go with a player that actually was in the draft class, and that is going to be the number one player on the board right now. Brian Kelly out of USC. Doesn't look particularly amazing, but he is a 75 overall, which was uh, better than Rossum, who we took. 88 speed, 78 man, 79 zone. He's not terrible, and I think that's going to do it for the draft. We took a lot of players in this draft class. Let's go ahead and see where some of the other players in this draft class went. We're looking for Patrick Sertain. We're looking for some of the offensive linemen just to see. We're looking for Charles Woodson, obviously, Samari Roll. It's going to be interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and sort by overall. Obviously, I don't want to see Jaguars. I would like to see all NFL. And sort by overall, which is showing up as Charles Woodson was a 91 overall. Man, pretty good. Pretty good player. Obviously, I wish I could have taken him as well. He goes instead of the Raiders to the Jets, and he's going to wear number 24. So... Does this mean that he's 24 after Darrell Revis because we're doing it in 2018 or 2019 now? Or is he 24 before Darrell Revis because Charles Woodson was drafted in 1998? That's something to think about. Alan Fanica is an 83. There's a significant drop-off in overall here. Heinz Ward goes to, what is this, the Bills probably or the Lions? Cowboys. Heinz Ward to the Cowboys. Fanica went to either the Bengals or the Browns. It looks like he goes to the Bengals. I wish it would show me the team. I don't think that's too much to ask, so I don't have to guess. Flozel Adams to the Cardinals, I would guess. Yes, to the Cardinals. Jamal Williams to the 49ers. Kyle Turley. What team would this red be? We're just going to find out. The Chiefs. All right. Trey Thomas to the Giants, maybe? The Colts. I don't like this guessing game. Takeo Spikes goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What was he looking like? Pretty good. Pretty good. Matt Burke to the Lions. Jeff Saturday. Oh, that looks like the Lions. Oh, Panthers? I'm going to say Lions and then Panthers. Titans. Jeff Saturday goes to the Titans. Keith Brooking to the Raiders. Interesting. Jeremiah Trotter to uh, the Vikings. Yes. Fred Taylor, of course, we took him. Again, a Jaguar in real life. I didn't even put two and two together on that. Amon Green. Is this the Bills? It is. The Bills take Amon Green. He looks pretty good. Uh, Fred Taylor should have, in my opinion, looked a little bit more like this, and it should have been the other way around. Um, as the Dolphins take Pat Tillman. Patrick Sertain goes to... I have no idea who that would be. The Browns? Interesting. What are your stats looking like, Patrick Sertain? 90 speed, 82 man, 83 zone. He's looking like probably the best cornerback in that class outside of, of course, Samari Roll to the Pats. Wow. Outside of, of course, Charles Woodson. Samari Roll... 90 speed, 81 man, 77 zone. Pretty good looking cornerback there. Anyone else of major note? Uh, not really seeing any crazy names here of players that were just really good in this draft class um, in real life. But I think we definitely looked at a few of them. Brian Greasy was a 74 overall. 73 even playing down one with confidence. He looks pretty bad overall. I saw Matt Hasselbeck earlier. But yeah, interesting. Let's go ahead and simulate and see how these players do. I think the Peyton Manning to Randy Moss connection should be pretty good. We don't have any uh, offensive line, really. But at cornerback, I mean, we're not going to... DJ Hayden can just get released. I don't... Like, what are you doing here? There's no way you can start. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and start on defense. Brian Kelly and Alan Rossum. Of course, this is a pretty Rossum team. You guys love puns? That one was pretty weak. But we have a pretty good team. Let's go ahead and simulate through the season. Not 10 years. Simulate through the season and see how uh, individual players around the league performed. Should be pretty exciting. I think the Jags should do pretty well. It's Peyton Manning. And it's Randy Moss and Fred Taylor. This is a pretty good draft class. So we made the playoffs going 8-8. Eight and eight. Just phenomenal. As you can see, the records. <laughs> a lot of disparity there. 7-8-1, 7-8-1, 7-9. As we go 8-8. Eight and eight. Good to see it. Peyton Manning has four skill points, as I guess we'll put that into Field General. I think Field General gives you the most bang for your buck because you're upgrading accuracy, which at the end of the day is uh, probably the most important for a quarterback in-game. 
there's no decision making stat but uh if there were I, that's pretty important if you're a quarterback and you can't make good decisions uh, with what to do with the football you're not going to be a very good quarterback in real life we've seen that a lot and that's why i'm not a huge fan of josh allen and why i'm not a major fan of sam darnold either randy moss has a couple of skill points we might as well keep him going into deep threat. He'll be a 96 overall by the time we're done with him. And he is uh, looking pretty damn good. I think him wearing 85 is pretty weak. But uh, of course, we have 84 already taken, I believe, by D.D. Westbrook. I think D.D. Westbrook wears number 84. He wears 12. So is it Keelan Cole who wears 84? It is Keelan Cole. My bad. My bad. I don't really care about the rest of the guys. Fred Taylor only got one skill point. We'll go into power back. I need more speed for Fred. Is that possible? Clearly not. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, nothing major. I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to check out the stats, however, and see how each individual player performed. Peyton Manning, 4,000 yards passing, 24 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. An interesting season compared to his, uh, his real-life numbers in 1998, which were nowhere near as good as he threw more interceptions than he had touchdowns in this particular year. 24 here. And I think he had 28 in real life. Fred Taylor averaged about 4.1 in the carry. Uh, per carry, I should say. 13 touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards. Randy Moss, an uninspiring performance, if I'm being honest. 83 catches for 1,000 yards, 4 touchdowns. Randy Moss had a nose for the end zone. What are you doing, Peyton Manning? Use him. He's the best receiver in the league, arguably, at this point. Defensively, we have interceptions for Brian Kelly, who had 2. And, uh... Alan Rossum, really not a fantastic performer. Charles Woodson had 104 tackles for the Jets. He only had three interceptions. Still, not a terrible year. He's up to a 98 overall, so he, you know, it's safe to say he developed pretty well. <laughs> 98. What are you doing, Charles? He would not have developed on this team like that somehow. What about sacks? This class wasn't exactly filled with uh, pass rushing monsters, as we've seen in the past with some of them. But this was a decent class overall, obviously. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of sacks. But Keith Brooking, four and a half sacks. 138 tackles in the interception. That is a very, very good season. I wouldn't be shocked if he wins AFC Defensive Rookie of the Year. Jamal Williams, defensive tackle, got drafted by the Niners. Four sacks for him. Decent season for a defensive tackle. Let's see how Heinz Ward did. Well, Tim, Matt Hasselbeck. 4,400 yards, 34 touchdowns, 16 picks. Interesting season for him. I don't think Brian Greasy really would have played. So we're not going to spend our time looking for him. What about Amon Green? Would he have played much? He's only a 79 overall, so I kind of doubt it. Where is he? He probably didn't, very, he didn't play much, so there's no real reason looking for him either. We'll look at wide receiver. Show me Hines Ward up here. That's what I'd love to see. Julio Jones had 18 touchdowns. The yards are believable. Touchdowns, maybe not so much. As uh, Jerron Brown went off with the Browns. What? Randy Moss uh, led rookie receivers in yards. And Cameron Meredith had zero touchdowns. That's very odd for the number of uh, catches and then yards. Is there anybody else in here? Where is our guy? Heinz Ward with the Cowboys. Seven touchdowns, 909 yards. Pretty good season for him. And then, of course, we're not going to be really be able to check stats for offensive linemen. We're not going to look at sacks allowed. That's kind of weak. Matt Ryan wins MVP. Matt Hasselbeck is in the top 10. Any other rookies in here? I'm kind of shocked that Peyton Manning is not. Well, I, that's actually not even true. Um, AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Any rookies in here? I'd say rookies, but of course, 1998. Uh, Defensive Player of the Year. No rookies in the AFC. What about the NFC? Defensive Player of the Year, Nigel Bradham. Any rookies in here? No. Offensive Player of the Year, Matt Ryan. And Matt Hasselbeck, of course, not a huge shock. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Matt Hasselbeck. Heinz Ward at number two. Vaughn Page, number three. Glenn Dunlap, number four. Giorgio Harvey, Chance Bentley, Zach Reinhardt, Neron Sims, Nolan Schweigert, and Clayton Dane round out the top ten for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Bradley Phelps. Now the New Orleans Saints, Cando Daisy, Philip Drawn, Sam Cowart, Pierre Boyette, Javier Marshall, Jamal Williams, Jeremiah Trotter, Kent Holloway, and Lance Schultz for the Defensive Rookie of the Year. NFC and then Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, we just checked out, so let's go in the AFC. So AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year is Peyton Manning. 
Followed up by four Jaguars. Well, followed up by three, but, you know, four Jaguars in a row. Fred Taylor, Randy Moss, Walker Slaughter. Of course, Jamal Sheehy in there. Cartavius Rivers, Irvin Kirksey, Rich Sutt. Jettishon Ginn and Amon Green. Some of these players, uh, not real. Keith Brooking wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. So, in real life, a Raiders player wins. It's Charles Woodson. Um, and also in our simulation, a Raiders player wins. But it's not Charles Woodson who finishes number two. It's Keith Brooking. As Brian Kelly comes in at number three. Griffin Kuplin, Dwayne Starks, Patrick Sertain, Greg Ellis, Alan Rossum, Pat Tillman, and Samari Roll round out the top ten. This was pretty interesting. Obviously, Charles Woodson is up to just a ridiculous overall. Randy Moss is a monster. Uh, we have Peyton Manning's a monster. Let's go ahead and see how that stacked up to the real-life 1998 awards in the NFL. Terrell Davis won the MVP. Rookie of the Year went to Randy Moss. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Charles Woodson. So we didn't get any correct in the, uh, in the simulation, but both were close. Randy Moss, super close. Charles Woodson, super close. I would hope so. I would hope so. But guys, I think it's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Let me know what draft class you want to see me do in the next time I do this video. I think these videos are a ton of fun to do. Um, so, yeah, just let me know. This was a lot of fun, but I will, yeah, of course, see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Yeah.